What's up everybody? It's mid-July and it's smoking hot, uh, but we've got a cool summer project that I'm going to work on that I thought you might want to see. So I am going to be doing a portable fish finder rig this week for our video. And I wanted to take you along on this because it's something that might be useful to you. Electronics are insane nowadays with fishing. You don't have to depend on them, but they do give you a considerable advantage. I do a fair amount of fishing out of my canoe in addition to fishing out of a boat and fishing off the shore. And especially with the canoe, there's a lot of days that I wish I had a fish finder with me. Additionally, Preston was just in Canada. I'm hoping to make it up there before the end of the year. Uh, where he was, they had fish finders, but a lot of these more remote places you're going to go fishing, they may not have that for you, or they're going to be really old models. So what I'm going to do this week is I'm going to take this piece of PVC board with a clamp and use this for my fish finder mount. It's going to be looking like this with a clamp in between. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to take this metal bar and I'm going to be rigging my transducer to this. We've got a hummingbird. Got a Humminbird Helix 5 that's left over from another boat that my dad had. So it's sitting around doing nothing and we want to make use of it. Now this project is about a $70 project when you add up all the stuff that I had to go out and purchase. Um, some nuts and bolts, brackets from Lowe's, uh, the PVC board I had left over from decking. And then I've got about $20 or $25 in wiring, uh, insulated terminals and an inline fuse, which is very important with your electronics. This battery, I'm going to make this a little bit modular. I'm going to make this a project that can go a little bit of a different way. If I'm in a bigger boat with a motor that already has a built-in battery, I'm going to put in ring terminals, but I'm going to have a longer section of wire attached to those, and I'm going to have a disconnect with uh, the nylon male and female clips so that I can wire in the mail clips and they'll go directly onto this battery. And that way I can take this battery and the monitor and most of the wiring and I can put that right into a little soft sided cooler. That's the rest of the cost. It was $25 on Amazon. So stick with me on this project. It should be a pretty short deal, but it's gonna come in quite handy. Okay, we've got part one of the project done. I've got my fish finder mount. This is going to clamp right to the side of the boat like this. Looking pretty good. Next, I'm going to do my transom clamp for the transducer. Last, I'll do the wiring, and then we'll be set to go. With the first part of this project done, and move on to the transducer mount. We've got a couple spots here. Pull out the transducer a little bit. A couple spots here where I can take it and I've bored out this plate. It already comes with a couple holes. I found this at Lowe's or Home Depot for a few bucks. Um, to be honest, I don't even know what it's really for. I think it's a support strap. Um, but I've bored it out so I can mount it either here or here, here, after I've looked at it, it doesn't really seem to make a lot of sense. So I'm going to mount it to here, like this, and then it's only got the one screw, so rather than come in with a second screw, because it doesn't really want to align well, I'm going to use some silicone to kind of tie this down and glue it down to keep it from swaying side to side like this. OK, 
Okay, the silicone has dried on the transducer mount. So we've got a single bolt and the silicone holding this down. Working on the clamp end of the tran clamp end of the transducer now. I just tapped the hole here to accept the bolt. Still a little hot. <laughs> you gotta be careful when you're working with this. And I'm gonna use this larger one here with some washers so the fitting doesn't slide through. And then I'm gonna take another hole here so that I can modify the depth of the transducer mount for different types of boats that I might want to clamp this on. So I can accept, and rather than modify this to accept the height, I'm going to modify the clamp so if it's sitting too deep and it's riding in the water like this and it's really getting kicked out as the boat moves along, I'll be able to move it up so it sits right at the water line. There we go, finished transducer clamp, transducer at the bottom, clamps right on the boat, good to go on the back. I'm going to make a second hole here so I can lower the clamp and adjust to a different stern height. Then we'll do the wiring and we'll be done with this project. Okay, we're back with this project and the last thing to do is the wiring so that we can get this fired up. The transducer is taken care of, the bracket to hold the fish finder is taken care of. This is the last part we need to get taken care of before we go out and test it on the water. This is the power cord and it's sufficiently long to go directly to this plug. I'm actually going to trim these off to use, take these two off to use insulate and fully nylon, uh, fully insulated nylon terminals. And then I'm going to actually uh, add some 18 gauge and then an inline fuse so that if I ever get some kind of power surge, I'm not going to fry my fish finder. Also, a point of note that I've learned the hard way, uh, this, like you can see, if it focuses there, is silver. It's not copper. You don't want copper wire. Don't go down to your local hardware store, get copper wire. It'll work, but you're going to be out on the water and exposing it to the elements, and it's just going to suddenly die on you one day, and you're not going to know why. You want tinned wiring. This is marine grade. So you're going to go, want to go buy out and buy your extension wiring for any project like this. Any kind of wiring in any boat, tinned wiring. Okay, we're going to let those cool off. And we're going to set up this wire to be the modular wire that I can plug into the power source or the power source here, I'm going to extend these out and uh, match these to ring terminals. And then this end will have the male or female, uh, female disconnects so that I can plug it in and use it as an extension wire for a main battery on an, on, on an outboard boat. Like if you were fishing in Canada and there was no fish finder and it was just a small Lund or similar Alumacraft and you didn't have a fish finder, but you didn't want to run your fish finder all day off this small battery. Okay, the wiring's done, my bracket's done, my transducer's done, so moment of truth, let's see if we get some power out of this.
working. Obviously the transducer is not connected right now so you're not really going to get any pickup or feed. It is so stinking hot out right now. It's so stinking hot out right now. It's like 96 degrees. Um, hopefully, as soon as we get a, a little cooler weather, we can get out here and give this thing a demo. Maybe run it on some white perch. But um, let's see what we got here. Yeah, I mean, we're in demo mode. We're in demo mode, but we got got the chart plotter working. You can see the chirp on the bottom, the high definition sonar, and then your traditional sonar on that top pan. So pretty cool. Can't wait to get out and give this thing a try.